Welcome to this Dynamita Digital Twin Demonstration Video. Dynamita DT is a programmatically operated simulator, with automated input and output connections to the real system. To run a digital twin project, you will need at least one active Sumo license driving the digital twin. At least one digital twin toolkit license for the specific objective of this digital twin implementation. You will also need an OPC UA server and a realistic input dataset for testing and demonstration, or a SCADA system to which the digital twin is connected if you are running a real-time controlled digital twin system. Last but not least, a data conditioning module to validate and reconciliate data if it is not already in the SCADA. Dynamita provides the Sumo and DT software and licenses, as well as construction or support for the construction of the automation logic. This table summarizes what Sumo Digital Twin Toolkit can help you achieve in combination with different tools. Please check with us for details if you are interested. Now, let's learn about Sumo DT with an example. On the left side is a model we are calling, Real Plant, representing a real plant that has, real-time monitoring data. This means that in a model we can at every moment in time, know all values, while in reality this is not possible. We set up simulated samplers in the plant model that provide realistic, measured data, to the DT. On the right is the Sumo DT model. As you can see, the left side real plant is more complex than the DT on the right side. It contains more reactor compartments because it simulates hydraulic behavior with greater resolution. The DT model is simpler than the real plant model in this demonstration to capture the effect that a model is always a simplification of what is happening in the real world. In the real plant, the model parameters are left at their default values. The defaults are generally valid for most cases. However, some calibrations may be still necessary for specific projects. The measured values in the plant are sent over to the DT, which has an ammonia-based aeration controller that controls ammonia around the set point by manipulating the dissolved oxygen concentration. Once the required dissolved oxygen concentration to maintain the ammonia set point is calculated by the DT, the DT will send the oxygen set point back to the plant's aeration tanks to achieve the same ammonia set point as in the DT. This assumes that the model is well calibrated and describes reality. The digital twin relies on the communication between two plants through the use of a Python interface and an OPC server. Both plants are connected to the main Python script, that controls the tasks and data transfer, and communicate through the OPC server. The OPC dashboard, created directly in Sumo, specifies the connections that should exist between a plant and the OPC server. The connection is required for Python script to collect and send data and give instructions to the model. The Python script is connected through the Python API and controls Sumo simulation and speed. The light blue arrows represent the OPC dashboard read by the Python API while the dark blue arrows represent two-way communications between the Python API and data source, SCADA. Now that you know the setup, let's take a look at how it works in Sumo. As we mentioned, the digital twin will communicate with the plant through an OPC UA server. So you need to have connection to an OPC server. In this demonstration, we are using CAP server. Right-click on the CAP server, and open the OPC UA configuration. Here you will find the URL. Keep in mind that you are going to use this number, 49320, in the Python settings script later. Right-click again, and this time we open OPC configuration. What we are going to do is to create channels for the communication to go through. In this demo, we have created channel 1 for Sumo control and channel 2 for Sumo mapping. Both will be under the connectivity menu. Within each channel, we also have created multiple tags to send and receive data. We will elaborate this in the mapping files. The Sumo DT Toolkit provides you a DT general user interface to allow you launching the system with just simple clicks. Before start, let's take a look at a Python file named, settings.py. In this file, you will need to update the lines based on which OPC server you are using and where you store the relevant files. In the line of OPC underscore server underscore address, we need to make sure we are using the same number, 49320, of the CAP server. 
You also need to use this file to set up the simulation speed and stop time. In this demonstration the stop time is set to 20 days, meaning Sumo is going to run a 20 days dynamic simulation. The datacom is set to 15 minutes, meaning the data exchange interval in Sumo is 15 minutes. These values can be customized and changed in a real situation according to the availability of data. Now we can try the DT GUI. Click on Plant Start button, which will show a green light. Then we can click on DT Start. Green light again. Just wait a few seconds, Sumo Plant and DT will start automatically. These two Sumo files are connected by Python script and CapServer. The plants will start initializing, we can see the stop time is 20 days and data interval is 15 minutes as defined in the Python file. While the simulation is running let's take a closer look at the plant. The plant has dynamic diurnal influent flow. At the influent unit, by using the moving average tool available in Sumo, we are taking the average COD daily, the average total Kjeldal nitrogen twice a week and the total phosphorus once a week to represent real-time influent monitoring data, because in this demonstration we are not connecting to a real plant. At the effluent of primary clarifier, we are taking average ammonia every half an hour, simulating an ammonia sensor, because we use it as an important input for controlling ammonia. We also take an average total suspended solids twice a day. That's important for correctly representing the solids loading to the plant. We do similarly, for the secondary clarifier effluent. All these, readings, will be sent to the DT through the OPC channel with tags predefined in the mapping files. In the digital twin, the oxygen half-saturation parameter was calibrated as the hydraulic conditions are different in the plant and the simplified DT model. The plant contains more reactors which is a simple way of simulating the higher level of complexity in reality. More reactors create a more plug flow-like environment which usually performs better than one or two CSTRs in series. Therefore, to match the nitrification performance in the DT, the DO half saturation for the nitrifiers needed to be reduced, which is a simple case of calibration. We also need to produce two mapping files plant.csv and dt.csv. You may remember that we have created tags in the OPC channels. In the mapping files, we need to assign a tag for each pair of parameters to send or receive data. For example, in the plant.csv, we assign OPC tag channel 2.sumo mapping.plant underscore Q for the plant to output influent flow rate. In the dt.csv, under the same tag, dt will receive flow rate Q as an input parameter to influent unit. This way, the plant's dynamic flow rate is mapped to dt. We can see the influent in DT is receiving data from the plant. An ammonia-based aeration controller was set up using the Sumo controller tool, and the effluent ammonia concentration is controlled around its setpoint by manipulating the DO setpoint in the aeration tank prior to the secondary clarifier. Once the controller in the DT calculates the DO setpoint, it will be sent back to the plant aeration controller. The airflow will be manipulated to meet this DO setpoint. The ammonia-based aeration controller is a PID controller, which has been tuned to closely maintain the ammonia set point. So even when there is a big variation in the flow rate, the ammonia level is well controlled in DT. In the plant, we can see the ammonia set point is maintained at the same level, which in this example is 0.5 gram nitrogen per cubic meter, 
and the ammonia is well controlled around this set point with a small realistic variation. From the DO output, we can see the DO in the plant is following the DO set point very closely. Sometimes, when the plant performance allows to treat ammonia to a very low concentration, we can decided to increase the effluent ammonia level to a higher but still acceptable level to reduce the aeration costs. To demonstrate this case, the ammonia set point can be changed in the DT. In this demo, we can increase the ammonia set point from 0.5 to 1 gram per cubic meter. The set point in both plants will respond to the change, then the ammonia level will follow the change quickly because the aeration is being manipulated to meet the DO set point. Slight oscillation might be observed because there is a dynamic influent and a short delay caused by data communication. However, the variations are at a realistic level, therefore, they are normally acceptable for real plant operations. Please note that the very first online implementation of this solution in the world was at HRSD, at the Nanzaman plant. All credit goes to Jeff Sparks, Charles Bott and Peter Van Rolegum. In a nutshell, the Dynamita Digital Twin is a programmatically operated simulator based on the Sumo engine, with automated input and output connections to the real system. It can improve productivity and stability of wastewater treatment plants with real-time operation insights. With the Sumo DT, your plant's operational performance will be improved for cost control, carbon footprint reduction and better resilience.